name is Taki Tina, and I'm going to hang you. What? Please don't hang me. That's murder. The Midnight Avenger has her orders. Please, please, I'll give you 100 bucks if you leave now. Are you trying to bribe me? Sure I am. I don't want to hang. Just for that, after I hang you, I will behead you. Behead me? Have mercy on this poor innocent gnome. Your time is up. The world will not miss an old, cheap, crooked, selfish, drunken, poor excuse for a gnome. You must pay for your crimes. You can call me anything you want, but at least I'm not a killer. Prepare to die. Wait, wait, I can't die. I haven't seen John from Arkansas finish his 66 T-Bird. Come here, you. No, no, you can't do this. Want a bet? Yes, you see, you might be the Midnight Avenger and you have orders to string me up, but you have to get by my bodyguard first. Bodyguard? You have a bodyguard? Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Why, well, everybody? Welcome to part two of my new series. I received uh, quite a few comments on it, and uh, most of them were positive, which surprised me. I didn't think anybody would be interested in this, but uh, apparently it's a hit. But wouldn't you know it? Old Buzz is in a pickle! Again! Come on, let me show you what I've got. Ah. Mm. Well, I decided to put the speaker in there and then uh, put the chassis in there to see how it would line up right. But first off, right there, there's a tube here that hits there. There's a tube here that hits that. Oh, that's too bad. Can't even get it in there. You can't fix, stupid. Now, I may be able to rotate that up here so this transformer is up here. But this plate will be down here. I'm going to have to remove that plate. Uh, it's always something. The speaker is a Zenith speaker. And it's got this uh, plate on here to attach to the chassis. And this thing is just in my way. And it looks like it's got a rivet in there. So I'm gonna have to drill that out or, or cut it out. Maybe if I take my Dremel tool and just cut into that. I don't think this is gonna work, but I gotta try something. Whoa. <laughs> I must be psychic. And this time I put two of them on there. I'm guessing that's significant. Double my pleasure and double my fun here. My toe bones connected to my foot bones. My foot bones connected to my heel bones. My heel bones connected to my ankle bones. That's how they connected those dry bones. What do you think? You gonna come off? You are normally very stupid, but this time you have devised a very good plan. I'm budging. I'll continue to grind it off camera. Well, I ground quite a bit of it off. Still not budging. Let me see if I can loosen it up with a hammer. The Hammer of Thor! Looks like it's budging right here. Make it happen. Get this thing out of here. Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent! Success. Well, I ground that down smooth here. So let's stick it in the cabinet. See if it works now. Okay, I've got the transformer on top here. That loose space here. Let's see if it fits now. Oh, good luck, Pilgrim. 
Oh crap. <laughs> it's not going in as far as it'll go right here. There's where it's hitting right here. This little part sticking out. Looks like I'm gonna have to cut part of the chassis so that it can go in more. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to cut this section out here. Man, I really hate doing that, but I'm gonna have to do it. I hope I don't ruin it. So let it be written. So let it be done. I only need like an eighth of an inch. I could cut that, but I'm not going to. Believe me, I thought about it. Oh, what the hell, you only live once. Let's cut it. If I mess up here, it's gonna be a short series. <laughs> this is what this is all about, you know. Trial and error. Experimenting with buzz. And screwing up with buzz. Mostly screwing up. Let me try it. filter cigarette, try the taste of Kent. Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, things go better with Coca-Cola, things go better with Coke. Life is much more fun when you're refreshed. And Coke refreshes you best, it's the refreshing mess. Food goes better with, fun goes better with, you go better with Coke. The real life one puts extra fun in you and everything you Things go better with Coca-Cola, things go better with Coke. Right now, why not let an ice-cold Coke make things go better for you? Hope it's loose by now. I better cue up my... Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Let me clean that up and we'll try it. Oh, there it is. Glad that's over. Now the big question is, will that work or did I just ruin it? Well, there's only one way to find out. So let's do it. Let's do that. Let's just get it on here. All right, here we go. You gotta calm down. You're getting a little emotional. Look at that. That's what I needed. About an eighth of an inch. I'm sure glad that's over. I think I dodged a bullet on that. All right, onward. Now I've been thinking about this and I've decided I better start figuring out how I'm going to secure this with these holes here. This looks complicated. I'm gonna use this piece of cardboard to get me in the ballpark and where to uh, line up a couple of brackets that I need to put on here. Okay, I just uh, taped up this piece of cardboard on here. And when that's in there, I gotta make sure this is centered. That looks about right. I'm gonna clamp this. Why it's preposterous. I can actually drill a hole here, since I know where that is. I just want to go straight up and drill that hole. Anyway, according to my mind, I think that would work, but I may be all wet. 
All right, I just want to go straight up in the middle of that hole. There you have his mad dream. I'll do that off camera. What I need to do now is I need to bend it. And I'm not going to pull out my Harbor Freight bender just for that. So I'll use the frame to bend this. You idiot! You'll ruin everything! Whatever it takes, bend them to your will! Have you considered therapy? Not too good, is it? But it should work. Now the next step is putting this here. Now since that's in there, all I have to do is line this up again. I'm going to clamp it again. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! Now mark this and now I know where to drill the hole for that. And I think that'll work, but what the hell do I know? Okay, I got the hole drilled here. I think that's going to need a little bit of trimming there, but this should now line up with the cabinet in theory. Let's try it and stick it in. And it looked like easy going from there on in. Look at that. Boy, that was a key idea. Hot damn. Okay, now what I think I'll do is... I got this nut here. I think I'll solder it right in the middle there. Okay, I gotta get this hot, so I'm gonna lay this on here for a while. We'll be back when it's hot enough. I think it's hot enough. I tried it. Let me put some flux around there. Clark, watch your language. You smell something? It's going pretty good. Let that cool off and we'll take a look at it. Well, here's a close up of it. I'm going to take this uh, this washer off here. Won't need that. Well, there it is with the star washer off. Hey, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, I've got the two brackets mounted. And it lines up okay. Here's the front one. I put some solder in here. Just to uh, lock that in place in case the screw ever comes loose. This is the rear bracket. I uh, put some solder on that one too. Okay, it's time to put on the IF cans. One will go there, and one will go over here. So I'm gonna drill holes off camera. The holes have been drilled, but this time I got smart. I bought me a set of uh, drill bits from Ace Hardware. Man, the difference between these and those Chinese ones is a world of difference. Couldn't believe it. Here are the holes. There's two holes for the can and one hole for the wires. Now things are beginning to make a little sense. The funny thing about these uh, IF cans, I ordered these from eBay. Now these IF cans were actually from a uh, airline 62425, just like this one's gonna be. Wow! I just kind of lucked out and I saw that on eBay, so I snatched them up.
Looks like that's gonna shine up pretty good. Let me get them all done and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, this is a warning alert. Everybody put your sunglasses on now. I'm gonna put mine on and then I'm gonna show you uh, what these cans look like. So everybody got their sunglasses on? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, here it goes. Oh, that's bright. I just want to tell you it was a real pleasure watching you work. I'm going to test these IF coils. According to the schematic, uh, each side is 26 ohms. So I've got one side hooked up. Let's turn it on. What is this, this doohickey? See what that one side is. Okay, it says 24.4 ohms. 25. And 1.4 millihenries, I think. I always get millihenries and microhenries mixed up. I think it's millihenries. Mm-hmm. Let's check the other side. Okay, here's the other side. Twenty-three point nine point nine nine millihenries. Let's check the second one. Twenty-three point five and one point oh millihenries. Okay, here's the other side. Twenty-four point eight ohms, one point four millihenries. I wonder which side is which. <laughs> Now that we've measured these coils here, it's time to wire them up. They came with no wires, so whoever had these took the wires out. The only wire here is the one for the grid cap. And I'm glad that's on there because now I know uh, which way this one will hook up. As for this one, since they're both 26 ohms on each side, we don't know which is the primary and which is the secondary, or if it even matters. But I guess once it's hooked up, we can try it both ways. So let me get these wired. When you're building a chassis from scratch, there's bound to be problems that pop up when you least expect it. And I've just ran into a problem here. I didn't foresee this when I was doing it, but let me show you. I put these two IF cans here, and I was trying to measure with a tube here, a tube here, and a tube here to make sure there was enough clearance for these cans. But old Buzz forgot one thing. What? What is it? The tuning. Watch what happens when I put this all the way over here. Wasn't paying quite enough attention to it. But you know, I'm gonna blame my old pal, John from Arkansas for this. Cause I was watching his video while I was lining this up and drilling the holes. So John, stop it. Let's see if I can fix this. Okay, I've got the second set of holes um, drilled. I put the tubes in here to make sure I had clearance. Here's the second set of holes. You can see the difference. I was off quite a bit there, but uh, let's stick the can in. And the big test is the tuning cap. Will it hit it or not? There's actually more clearance than what the camera's showing. Who knows how many other screw-ups that's gonna come along, but when you screw up, you just gotta fix it. It's all part of the learning process, right? Righto. I got the two coils wired. They're looking pretty good. You shut off. Not bad. It's not good either. 
Here's the wires from the IF cans. Here's the first IF can. Here's the second. Dear Lord, what are you doing? I put these on strips so I can just solder these on here and then from wherever these go, I can just add from here to the tube or whatever. I think it's going to be easier that way. So now begins the wiring of this radio. I'm going to start where the uh, power comes in from here. Here's my progress so far. I've got the power cord hooked up here and I got a fuse in it. I've got a CL90 here to limit the current on power up. I added some terminal strips here and these are soldered to the chassis and there's one up here and I'll probably end up uh, putting a few more in there somewhere when I figure it out so I'll continue doing this and update you on the progress. I've got these uh, three resistors that are part of the voltage dividing circuit. I've got a cap up here I got uh, two electrolytics here. These are probably temporary until I figure out what works best in here. And I got a couple of resistors. Here's the schematic. I'm probably one third done, but we're getting there. Now here's my progress. I'm about three quarters of the way done. I added the uh, oscillator coil and the um, antenna coil here. Looks like a mass of wires. There's my schematic. As you can see, I'm getting close. This one's hard right here because it's just a mess. Can't even see the schematic here. Okay, I've completed the wiring. It took a couple of days. I traced out the circuit and found some errors. So I went back and fixed that and I traced it out again and hopefully I got it right. Hold on to your hats. We're going to test it. Whoa. Okay, I'm not worried about any shorts or anything. There's new components in here and I didn't screw up that bad. So, so I'm just going to power it up to 90 volts at first and then uh, take it from there. So, this is hot. Let's turn this on. So, we'll just bring this up to 90. Here's the volts coming in, and here's the amps. So, here we go. It's 90 volts. B plus is coming up over here. We're supposed to be getting, uh, well, I'm hoping for about 230. 230? No, 135. That's pretty low. Okay, 116. Let's just go up to uh, about 120. B plus 143. I was shooting for 135, so that looks pretty good. Let's turn it up. We don't get squat. <laughs> oh, brother! Hmm, nothing. <laughs> Okay. I think I hear something. A little bit right here. Let me bring the speaker closer so I can hear that better. Okay, let me try this again here. See if we can get anything. I'm sure you can hear that. That's weird. When I 
turn the volume up, it goes down. When I go down, it goes up. It figures. Yeah. <laughs> it's a one station wonder. Let me play with the eye of cans. tried your best and you failed miserably. The lesson is never try. Got one all the way loose. And this one just screw down a little bit. This is the first IF, this is the second. This one's on screwed all the way in. Something's getting through. You know what I think I'll do? I think I'll hook up my signal generator and we can inject the signal in there and see if we can adjust it better. I'm injecting a signal about 450 kilohertz in here. This one's tight and this one's loose. You know this is a no good. That one's loose. Now this one's almost tight. That's loose. Sounds better when it's loose. Now I've got my signal generator on full volume. That should be blowing the speaker out. It looks like maybe I miswired it again. Back to the old drawing board. I've been looking at that schematic so long, my eyes are cross-eyed. I hate those meters that go off like that. At least my B plus is right on. That was the start of a very long week of checking the schematic, verifying the two pins were wired correctly, looking for any errors on my part. I just couldn't get any significant audio out of this radio. I tried different antenna coils, oscillator coils, IF coils, tuning capacitor, speaker, and a new output transformer. I moved and relocated parts, all to no avail. I was beginning to doubt my own work. There had to be something wired wrong. I spent hours going through that circuit, making sure it was right. So I enlisted the help of Brendan, he's John from Arkansas's mentor, and we went through this radio signal by signal. This continued for three or four days. Then I get this email from Brandon. Buzz, I found the original schematic from Wards. There is a typo on your writer's schematic. R7 is supposed to be 210K, not 210 ohms. This is killing the signal out of the 75 tube. Brandon. Well, there it was. A damn mistake by writers who left out the M designation on the resistor. Gee, this is dumb. I had a 210 ohm resistor in there instead of a 210K. This radio was driving me crazy. Oh, brother. So after 12 days, here's what I got. What now? What is it? You're driving me crazy. 
What did I do? What did I do? My tears for you make everything hazy. Cloudy the sky of you. How true were the friends who were near me to cheer me, believe me, they knew. But you were the kind that would hurt me, desert me when I needed you. Yes, you. You're driving me crazy. What did I do to you? Well, 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 what a ride that was. Almost two weeks, but it's finally running. We're starting to get there. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Until next time, this is Buzz. If at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed.